Aloha everybody, it's Kaneki. I come in the name of the Lord and I hope you're having a good day. So I will come here uh, presenting this video uh, with more just knowledge of the mysteries of God and just guidance during this time. It's so awesome the way that things have, uh, have revealed themselves and then going on and just connects. It's so beautiful and it's amazing how it all happens and I'm so excited and uh, honored. I'm so honored to be here with you guys right now and uh, listening to the new stuff as well. So what this has to do with is two things that kind of interlap, right? And that the first one is going to be, if you deny me before all men, then I will deny you before my father. Pretty much like you don't deny Jesus, yeah? And the other one is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody, no man can come to the father except through me. Yeah, and that is the bottleneck, the only one way, the only one gate, the only one narrow road that you can go and be justified accordingly. You know, reap what you had sown so desperately and so uh, faithfully right now, right, in in your walk uh, to glory. So with the first one, if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before my father. A lot of we, what we have come to understand is that that has to do with, you know, you don't deny Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of examples out there where a lot of people will be like, you know, do you believe in Jesus? And they don't deny him, then they get killed. That is the very elementary aspect of how that works, yeah? That is the baby stuff. It's the most simple. This layering has to do with, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me, right? It matches right there. It twists and turns and gives us that bigger depth and dimension about who Jesus Christ, your Savior, the Lord, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the one and only and nothing, almost everything, yeah? How it wraps up. And in this sense, in the mature aspect of the Holy Spirit, what you have to understand is, if you deny me the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ before men, then I will deny you before my Father in heaven. Yeah? Because no man can come through the Father except through me. And the way, the truth, and the life is all aspects of Jesus Christ, who is just the very fun fundamental foundation that we had started off in our elementary minds to understand it. Yeah? So in this sense, when you have the way and the truth and the life now, how is it that if you do not, uh, if you deny the way to someone, yeah, if you deny the truth to someone, if you deny the life to someone, and you deny Jesus Christ to someone, then, you know, you won't be justified. You won't be approved. In this sense, the reason that there's three aspects right there, the way, the truth, and the life, right? With the way, the way is going to be the going, yeah? The truth is going to be what you think. And the life is going to be what comes out as the spirit from your heart, yeah? So the, the, the life, right, is going to be the justification of Jesus Christ anchored in your heart. And what comes out of a man is what his truth is. This is what makes him righteous, or this is what makes him vile. It's not what goes in, because what comes out comes straight from the heart. The heart of you, even the physical heart, yeah, is connected to the tongue. And the tongue will never be tamed. The tongue is the, one of the strongest muscles in the body, yeah? And out of this part of us, this word-forming muscle, the heart is connected, yeah? And it can come out blessings and graciousness and uplifting encouragement and can come out curses and vileness and the most terrible things, yeah? Out of that same, same little <laughs> muscle, right? And when you cannot control it, because it's going to always be wild, never tamed, it will always be wild, then how is it that you can justify your the truth of the matter, which is going to be your mind, the justification of your mind, your confession, that's where it meets 
through that one hole, right, um, out into the world, to choose consciously what is right, what is going to be the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ to all men, so that by your words you will be judged, and in your judgment he is going to be just, good, and fair. And if you have followed that correctly, then your judgment is going to be awesome, righteous, and hallelujah, yeah? So, in that sense, what you want to understand is the way that you do things. So the action ability, the processing of your body accordance in the way that you act, move, and feel outside, as well as the conglomerates of your mind, your heart, and the way that it amalgamates from that one, that one opening of your tongue, yeah? Um, how it can be correctly uh, justified into a righteous walk of faith and goodness in the truth always, right? And in that sense, you don't deny him before men at all. So with the mind, remember the Golgotha? The Golgotha is the place of the skull where you need to be crucified. Jesus Christ was crucified on Golgotha outside of the holy city of Jerusalem as prophesied as God had already planned. And the reason that it's in your mind that you have to be crucified is remember the crown of thorns that Jesus had as a mock crown on his head. Yeah, It's a huge symbolism right there. And the reason that it was on his crown, this mock uh, thing, is because when it comes down to the kingdom of heaven corporealizing, okay, so just like how the Antichrist spirit is everywhere, but it's being corralled into that one point, and when it gets to that one point of matter of fact, with like what we are, just all these little points put together so condensely, you'll see the Antichrist as a man, as a real person, yeah? When it comes down to that on all aspects of how it goes on to the end, you're going to understand why it was Paul who was crucified upside down by Nero. Yeah, because he did he, he was not worthy of being crucified like his Lord. And so he got crucified upside down where the Lord was crucified right side up. And they both then had crowns on their heads, yeah? And in this sense, the reason that those crowns were there is because in the kingdom of heaven, you have the crown of righteousness. Now, what this means is the kingdom of heaven is in each man, yeah? And the kingdom of heaven is about power. So that means that you're righteous, you're thinking, you're justified in your mind. You have Galgothed, yeah? You have crucified yourself and so that you could be remembered to be reminded of the renewing of your mind so that it will be your second nature and that's what's going to come out. Um, in that sense, at that point where the two crosses are inverted, right? Where, and their crowns of righteousness, mock righteousness, then touch where it's going to be like heaven is, you know, so above, so below, uh, hyperbola, hyperbola and parabola, yeah, kind of thing, with images and opposites. That right there will help. Oh, it's the point where you can hate to love and love to hate. It's the point where through joy... Uh, you can be sinister. You can give a sinister joy. You can be joyfully sinister. That point right there, that weird grind, grinding part of two mock crowns of salvation is a fine line of where you will see the uh, fullness spectrum of your virtues and your sin nature, your rebellious nature, right? where it goes into each other, that small little cusp, and in that cusp is where you'll find the impudence of righteousness, or like the 144,000 who can shed blood and will not, the works won't be held against them. They can be lovingly hateful. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why everything was in God's plan, and why at this moment, the way, the truth, and the life, being Jesus Christ, who you must not deny before any man or you will be not denied the way, the truth, and the life and Jesus Christ before the Father, yeah, needs to be known right now because we're getting into that point where things are 
condensing yeah it's getting smaller it's going getting to the pointedness it's going to get to that point of its its realization and the reason that happens too is because as we all as we have learned and now know in all fact the word of god found in the bible is going to be an omnidimensional truth so you can read something and make it metaphorical you can read something and make it analogy and you can read something and take it literally and they will all be true do you see what i'm saying the the way that you make it metaphorically is you're going to be thinking justified in your thinking right then the way that you make it an uh or an analogy like a comparison is going to be from the heart yeah that's going to be the the life coming out the choice the discernment when they meet like that and the way that you can make it into matter right it's going to be when it's going to be like the literal thing where it's almost impossible to imagine that a fantasy something so fantastic can actually be in our our space our reality but it's not impossible because one nothing is impossible for with god yeah nothing including nothing and two the fact that we have this word called mankind now we use this word mankind in in a general whole newospheric type of consensus right and we use it we throw it around but have you ever thought about what it is because what we are is human what human is a hue yeah it's going to be co colors of the skin and the way that the light penetrates in the pigments melanins and whatever now you have black people white people yellow people red people like for real yeah that's human we are human Adam and Eve, they were the first man, yeah? Man. So where did Hugh come in, right? Mankind. It's going to be a kind of man. That's going to be like mermaids and werewolves. That's mankind. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, so that's where you can see that there's nothing new under the sun. But what has happened is words, in the beginning was the word. At the end is going to be the song, yeah? The words have been like twisted around but nothing was out of ever out of control it was twisted in the most perfect way because god has always been in control this has always been the plan right so that's why at this moment the way the truth and the life when it comes to the the justification of jesus christ in your heart um no, no, no. with your heart that you believe in are justified yeah so that's going to be the life. It's going to be the air that comes out using the tongue, that muscle, right? The justification of Jesus Christ in your heart. Then the mind is going to be where you get crucified. And that's going to be where as things become materialized, you're going to understand that it's going to be the righteous that's going to be the right hand of God. Because we have Jesus Christ who's going to turn to the King of Kings. And you're going to get into that weird spot where... Like the with the righteousness, you're going to have the Holy Spirit, the anointing where whatever is imperfect or discriminatory is just going to die. It's, they're going to get blasphemed by the Holy Spirit. It's going to be blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, right? With the righteous, they're going to be the ones who come together and like materialize the wrath of God and do it righteously. It's going to be a righteous war. It's like, and that's not possible, right? We cannot think of a righteous war of... Nobody, oh, somebody who wins in a war, it's pyrrhic to us, but nothing is impossible for God. Do you see how it works? And that's happening right now, right? And then when it comes to, uh, when you confess with your mouth that Jesus gives you, yeah, when you confess with your mouth, this is going to be your mind, the mind of truth, then discernment, where your untamable tongue, who is going to be correctly justified with the Holy Spirit, will come about in order that you have the gates of discernment, which is going to be your lips. That's the only thing that can keep the tongue <laughs> uh, at bay, yeah? Will come out so that the way, which is going to be the truth, which is going to be of Jesus Christ, who is going to be the only way that you can get through to the Father, yeah? Um, will come out and everything is aligned. Like, it's a systematic type of layering 
and it will have and it happens now because in the bigger picture that systematic type of layering is coming into play the other thing that I had uh, that was taught by Abba Adonai the Holy Spirit the teacher the Christ is the why, why was Christ born of water and of blood and of the Spirit, right? And we know that the Holy Spirit is going to be of three parts that are working together. And it's going to be the blood, it's going to be the water, and it's going to be the Spirit or the fire, right? So with that being said, knowing that when Jesus Christ, baby Jesus, was born down in Bethlehem, yeah, a bunch of the Hebrew babies got killed. A bunch of newborns, they got aborted, yeah? And it was by the hand of Herod, or the Caesar, or whoever, but the Roman Empire, who was, had been talked to by the three magi, but also who the Jewish faith knew was something to, to be feared. There was a fear there. And by Caesar's hand, he went out and issued a decree to kill all the firstborn babies, but Jesus Christ, you know, was was destined for something else. But that was a lot of blood spilled, right? There you go, there's blood through the Roman Catholic Church. It's choice. At the end, yeah, there was Jesus Christ, there was Herod, who was going to be the Roman Catholic Church, Barabbas was going to be the murderer and the thief, and then the Jewish people, yeah? And what had happened, the Jewish people condemned the innocent, released the guilty, and laid claim on the blood that was going to be on his, on their hands now, where then Herod, or Caesar, or maybe it was Pilate, one of the, the Roman Empire, sorry, he washed his hands in water. Do you see that? And when Jesus Christ got speared, the water and the blood separated. Do you see now how the Roman Catholic Church why they were in cahoots, God's big plan, they're going to be a huge benefactor because they are now in debt to their, their transgression. But the curse that they were going to get was then grabbed by the people of God himself. And so they had the water where then the blood got transferred to the cursed blood got transferred to the people, the Jewish people, and they cursed everybody else after that, yeah? And so, in this sense, look at what's going on right now, yeah? You got the Roman Catholic Church, and it's under fire. It's under fire. There's all this pedophilia. There's groups now making videos like all these horrible things that they've done, yeah? Yet, this factor, this faction, this it's an empire, okay? It's an empire of religion. It's, it's huge. And it's been huge since that time, way back then. But now that they are being purged almost, right? The judgment of the church is going to come first, right? You understand? Yet they are have become the head of the world. And the golden rule of the church is love thy neighbor as thyself. And the golden rule of the world is he who has the gold makes the rules. And the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church, this huge, huge entity, now stands with two golden rules to the, the, the connecting. Do you see how it's connecting? Because they have to pay their dues and everything is coming towards the end. And that is why you're going to see like huge, it's going to be benefiting the bride. Somehow or another, but the blood that's going to be spilled or the transgression or whatever is going to be paid back in full because God Almighty, the judge, yeah, he is fair and just and his ruling is righteous. There's no discrimination in it. It is by your words that you will be judged. And so in that sense, that's why now the way, the truth, the life, Jesus Christ, the way that the heart's justified, the mind's justified and how it comes out. The way that your soul, which is your body, animated, that's going to grow, right? And that's going to be the uh, benefactor, the holder of the spirit, which you're born with, but then can become a Holy Spirit if you walk in that righteous way of faithfulness now, because it's now the acts of faithfulness, not just the law of faithfulness, right? And you hit that with your mind, which is going to be the truth, then justified. Your tongue, who is not tameable, is a behemoth among men. 
Both praises and curses come out of it, and no one can control it, except the lips of discernment can cage it, because even silence can make a fool look wise, and discernment, which comes from wisdom, which will have prudence and insight, keeps you and will always keep you, because the word of God does not ever falter from its truth. Yeah? And it keeps its promises, its percepts, its oaths, its wills. And always God is good, God is love, and you always fall on God. So, in that sense, know that the only way to the Father is through Him, it's through Jesus Christ. Yeah? And so do not deny the way, the truth, and the life to people. Now, in that sense, break it down. What is the way, what is the truth, and what is the life? <laughs> so I come in the name of the Lord and I hope that you guys are having a beautiful blessed day and we are have it's been so exciting and thank you for joining me on this journey I can't believe I actually have people watching these things <laughs> but of course I can it's lift Jesus higher all right namaste I'm gonna go okay bye